I'm now going to take a couple of opposition speakers before we come back to support. Um, William Marvel, uh, South Conway, New Hampshire, representing himself for closing the bill. Yeah, sorry you had to come down the place. Oh, I made it worthwhile today. <laughs> But uh, I, uh, I want to reiterate that I'm here for myself. I don't belong to any uh, groups, and uh, I'm a uh, religious seatbelt wearer. Nonetheless, I'm, uh, I'm opposed to the bill, uh, obviously for philosophical reasons largely, but uh, I do have a couple of points that may fall within your purview. Uh, during the first minute of her minute, Representative Kelly uh, referred to the, um, the money that would be saved on medical expenses that are uh, paid through public funds. I seriously question how much that would be, uh, largely because of my own experience. I know a number of people who have had fall on uh, public assistance because of injuries that led to paralysis or long-term coma. Not one of them uh, was the result of an automobile accident, belted or unbelted. They were the results of motorcycle accidents, bicycle accidents, uh, diving accident, uh, some climbing accidents, and in one case trying to cross Route 16 in Conway on foot. So I seriously question how much of the money that the state spends on that sort of uh, medical expense uh, would be saved through this, uh, this law. The other point uh, deals with the $3.7 million, uh, which works out to about $3 per man, woman, and child in the state of New Hampshire. Considering the uh, precedents this law sets uh, in, in the government, the state government, telling the individual uh, how to act in order to protect himself largely, uh, I have to ask, is that how cheaply the legislature would sell our liberty? There are uh, arguments uh, against my claim that it's uh, largely to protect the individual from himself. And I could refute those, but this isn't the place. Yeah, this and that's really all I came down here to say. Thank you very much. That was very important. And I'm sorry if you didn't wait so long to say that. Thanks. I call Jeremy Olson of Grafton, New Hampshire, on representing himself and 22 citizens with written testimony in one copy of the report. Good afternoon. Um, basically, I am here to represent a number of people, 22 at current count, that have signed a petition that basically says that <coughs> if this law passes, we will intentionally refuse to wear a seatbelt and fight any tickets to the fullest extent of courts. And um, I'll just read one paragraph of this and then I'll end it in, so I'll be very brief. If HB 383 passed in the Hampshire Legislature this year, we will we pledge that we will not wear seatbelts and if stopped and ticketed by the police, we will fight the ticket to the fullest possible extent in the courts. We will make sure that the $100 or whatever this gets amended to, <clears throat> that the state attempts to extract from us as a fine for this offense will be far outweighed by the cost of the state spent attempting to do so. Some of us will no doubt refuse to pay the fine at all and instead take the two days in jail, which again costs the state, I believe, twice the value of the ticket. I have read that it's um, about $100 a day in jail. I also have a figure that says it's $100 an hour for, uh, to be in court. So that adds up real fast if people decide to fight this as, as fully as they can. And I have a list of 22 people that I will submit to you, and I am the first signer of that. And that's all I have, if there's any questions. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to point out that um, the, it is the county and the property tax that pay for the chair. 
Okay. Uh, Thank you. My name is Bob Constantine. I uh, heard a lot of talk in the beginning that this wasn't about the money, but that seems to be all we're focusing on. So if it's $3.7 million that we get from the federal government, and we divide it by 1.2 million people, I want to be the first one here to offer to the sponsor of the bill uh, $3 for my freedom. Thank you. Thank you very much. You I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, I don't think I'm allowed to. I'm sorry. No, I <laughs> Can I take it? You're on film, it's up to I'm not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not about the money. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the sponsor said it's not about the money, but our committee is supposed to be about the money. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's about the money. It's not about the money. Um, Mark Gordon, our manager, is representing the first one. I thank you. I'll keep my comments brief since uh, some of them have already been repeated. And I'm here today, just speak briefly on some of the unintended consequences of this bill and to having to do with the amount of the fine. And as the uh, policeman here said earlier, he freely admitted that he arbitrarily enforces a number of violations. And that's going to be spread throughout the state. So the more that happens, the more we're going to see respect for the police and law enforcement deteriorated. And I would suggest with these fines, it's going to add insult to injury if somebody not only gets pulled over, harassed, intimidated, and delayed by just being pulled over for not wearing the seatbelt properly over your shoulder, but then you have to pay a $50 or $100 fine, he's going to be doubly annoyed. So I suggest you reduce, even though this bill I think is horrible, if you must pass it, please reduce the fines to a dollar, five dollars, just like a uh, expiring parking meter up front, then the people won't be quite so annoyed and uh, mad that the laws have been passed. Thank you. Can I have written testimony if you like? Thank you, everybody. This was considerably more efficient than I was afraid of. Yes.